Hey you, Steve here. Welcome back to my studio. Today, I've got a brand new steaming pile of artsy review for you. This here light pad is by Elise and it's under my very picking nose today. So let's go on over to the drawing table and get cracking. Picky nose, who writes this crap? Here we are at the drawing board. Now you don't need to watch me unbox this, so I've gone, taken the liberty to take it out of the box. If you feel like you do need to watch me unbox it, you're gonna have to use your powers of imagination. But here's the light pad that I was sent for review, uh, along with the power cord and a little instruct instruction pamphlet. Now, when this company contacted me to see if their product uh, was something that I would wanna review, I warned them that if they had an on-off switch on the top of the pad that you touch to turn it on and off, uh, generally that's what most on-off switches do. Uh, if their switch was a touch switch that was on the surface of the pad, they probably didn't want me to review it since I was pretty rough on the, uh, the last pad that I reviewed. So unless theirs was on the side or the back, I really wasn't interested. Well, they must have listened because wonder of wonders, this one has the switch on the side. This pad is an A4 size. You know what? Let me go ahead and zoom in on this. You don't need to watch me. We'll zoom in on this and you can, uh, you can see it a little bit better. As I was saying, this pad is an A4 size. So that means that the lighted area of the pad is roughly eight and a half inches by 12 and a quarter inches. The surface is a hard acrylic and should hold up under normal use, unless you draw with a chisel and a Sharpie. Now, this pad has uh, five light level presets so that you have a nice selection of light intensities to work with. Let me go through them with you. This is off. One, two, three, four, five, and off. So if you want to work with very low light, let's say you're a vampire that's incredibly sensitive to light, uh, you can work really in low light. Or if your name is Mr. Magoo and you really need it bright, uh, it can go up to 1800 lux. Now I don't normally use pads this small, but it's big enough for reviewing. Another feature of this pad, which is pretty cool, is the fact that it has a lithium battery in it which means that you can use this pad anywhere and not be tethered to an electrical outlet. So what you say? Well, that means that if you're pining for your double mocha cappuccino espresso latte java skinny smoothie, but you need to get your work done too, you can go down to your local five bucks coffee shop and get your fix and get your work done at the same time without needing to find an electrical outlet. According to the specs, it can operate for six to seven hours on a single charge, or you can charge it in about two hours, or you can go ahead and plug it in and work tethered too. But, you know, I gotta warn you, you look really like an uncool Neanderthal if you do that, so. Uh, to charge the phone, it uses the latest, let me find it here, okay. To charge the phone, it uses the latest C-type charging port, and it very securely holds that C plug in so that it won't fall out. That really is in there nice and, and tight. Now on the other side is the traditional USB type A plug that plugs into the power brick that's not included, but most of us have a bunch of them around. So it uh, shouldn't be a problem with uh, getting one of those. Now there is another change that they made that fixes a complaint that I had on the Huion pad that I reviewed previously. Look at this. The ruler measurements that are printed along the edge of the lighted work pad, it's actually in inches rather than metric. <laughs> yes. That means that users in the US of A will have numbers that make sense to us and we can use a whole lot easier. Now, if we look here on the side of the pad, 
You can see that the pad has a wedge shape, which lifts the back of the light pad off the desk and creates an angle drawing surface. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in my hits and misses part of the review. Also, at the time of this video, which is the beginning of September 2020, the price for this pad is $32.99, or $33, $33 compared to Huion's A4 light pad of the same size, that's $54.99, or $55. Anyways, let me stop talking. Let me go ahead and give you my, uh, my re honest review. And while I do that, I'm going to go ahead and do a little drawing a demonstration to kind of show you how uh, I like using these. All right, here we go. Let's get into what I like about this pad and what's no bueno. First, the hits. As you can tell, I love the side button. When the touch button is on the top, like on the Huion pad, and especially with me being a lefty, I was constantly brushing across that on-off switch that was touch activated and turning the dang thing off. If you're a righty, well, it's not nearly as big of a deal. I had a lot of commenters tell me, just rotate the pad so the button's on the lower right side and problem solved. But truth be told, that was just as bad if not worse. With Elise's pad, it's on until you turn it off, period. It has a nice pressurized click to it. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a home run. I really like the inches ruler along the outside of the working area, though truth be told, I hardly ever use it. But some of you may really find it helpful and it's nice to be able to use it if and I need to. And so that's a hit too. Same with the lithium battery that lets me charge the pad and use it whenever I want without being tethered to where there's a convenient charging outlet. And I like the forward thinking type C USB plug. This type of plug is non-polarized and it allows you to plug it in in either orientation. Also, they give you a nice long six foot cable. And that's another hit. Pretty good, right? Well, before you rush out and spend your hard earned dinero, let's take a look at the misses, and I don't mean my wife. First, even though it says on Elisa's Amazon page that it has a memory button, mine doesn't remember the last setting. Or if it does, it don't work. This means that since I use the pad at its brightest setting, like I suspect most folks do, it resets to its lowest setting every time I turn it off to see how I'm doing. That means when I turn it back on to use it again, I have to click through all five levels to work again. If you use light pads, you'll know this can be a real pain in the patootie. I sent an email to their tech support guys using the email address on the Amazon page, but it bounced back to me as undeliverable. So good luck with that. I don't know if I just got a defective pad and that they really do have a memory feature that's supposed to remember your last setting, or if the info on the Amazon page of this pad is just crap. I don't know. I contacted the company person who reached out to me for a review, and if I hear from them before I post this review, I'll attach a short update to the end of the video. Otherwise, I'll pin any info that I receive at the top of the comment section. The second miss is the brightness of the pad. If you really, really need a bright pad, this one only tops out at about 1950 lux, whereas the Huion tops out at a very bright 4400 lux, more than twice as bright as this one. Though really I'm having no problem with being able to see what I'm doing with this pad. If you need a super bright pad, let's say that you work uh, on watercolor paper and you want to be able to get your drawing onto the paper, this may not be the pad for you. But for me, in this instance, it was just fine. The third miss for me is the small size of the pad. I need at least an A3 or even better, an A2 sized pad. The fourth miss is the built-in wedge shape of the pad. Now, if you only ever plan to use this pad horizontally, then no problem. But if you want to use it vertically in the portrait mode like I'm doing here, then it's definitely a problem. 
So I had to find something that I could put behind the thinner edge that was about the right height and use a wad of museum putty or kneaded eraser to keep the wedge in place. You know, I wondered why they did this and after I thought about it, I realized that they, they had to have some way of enclosing the lithium battery and this must have seemed like a good solution until you turn it to work vertically. Then it's a miss. Maybe on their second version of this pad, they can figure out a different solution. And the final small issue that I have with the Elise light pad is that there are only five settings. On other pads that I've used, when you press the button, there is a smooth increase for the light intensity going from zero to 100%. This pad is limited to five levels. Occasionally, I like to set my intensity at something other than 100% and it's nice to be able to choose that instead of having it dictated to me. Eh, it's a small gripe, but if I had to choose between having the on off button on the side or a smooth intensity increase button for the top, I'd go for the side button every time. In the end, would I spend my hard earned money on this pad? Would I buy it? Well, that depends. If it truly does have a memory function on the on-off button like they advertise, then I might buy it. And if I work small like this A4 size, even with the other misses, they aren't enough to keep me from buying or using it. I like it. I like it a lot. But I'm going to wait to buy it until there's a larger A2 size pad available, since I typically work much larger than this. This is a brand new offering from this company, and it's the only size available with the side button. But I'm hoping that they have plans to expand the line to larger pads. Well, that's what I'm holding my breath for anyways. If you only need a small pad like this, I think you'd be happy with what this offers if you can live with what the misses are. So, thanks for watching the video. I appreciate it, and believe me, I don't take for granted that you choose to take your time out of your day to join me here. I hope you found it useful. If so, hit the like or the share, or even consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell for more helpful reviews and mostly art tutorials where I'm uploading new steaming piles of artsy goodness for you, my YouTube friends. Until next time, I'll see you at the easel. Peace! Hi boys and girls. I did promise you that if I heard back from uh, my representative at the company, I would uh, let you know. And um, he sent me an email. Let me read it for you. Hi, Steve. It does not have a memory function. I'm really sorry about the misunderstanding. My colleague edited the description and he did not notice that. He's updated the description on the listing page. Let me know if you have any further questions. Uh, the only question I'd have is why does it not have a memory function? So you can make your decisions accordingly whether or not that's an important feature for you. So until next time, I'll see you down the road.